Welcome back. It's still the conversation right here on Morning Spring. And we have been discussing about uh, the manufacturing sector, which is currently in crisis. 20.95% drop in the GDP, you know, its contribution to the GDP, talking about the manufacturing sector. And we have been speaking with Mr. Kabiru Adisa, who is a financial analyst and who has got years of experience in the manufacturing sector. Thank you for staying with us, Mr. Adisa. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right. So earlier on, you spoke about uh, the fact that laws are not helping uh, companies in Nigeria thrive. A lot of international companies are coming in, some with good products, some with substandard products, but we are still absorbing them anyways. I'd like to ask your take about a particular statement credited to the president of the Manufacturer Association of Nigeria saying that it's better because we've been having exit of multinationals out of Nigeria. And it said at the time that it's, you know, it's okay for this people to, these companies to go so that we can allow the local ones thrive. Do you think that's actually um, a good point, asking or allowing the multinationals to go uh, just because you want the local ones to thrive? Can't we have both uh, the international companies, the multinational companies and the local ones, you know, side by side, helping the economy grow? Must we we'll must we dwindle, uh, kill the light of one so that another one can shine? Uh, you know, there are some things you don't have control on. For example, if a multinational decides to leave Nigeria, do you think we have control to stop them? The answer is no. So why can't we look at the opportunity? It has created an, a kind of opportunity for the local manufacturers to step in and come out in big form so that it can be a kind of opportunity to us. But you know, most of these multinationals, these multinationals they are, are offered at They were being paid. If I may button, uh, excuse me, the reason why these multinationals are leaving is not mm. because they woke up more, one morning and said, oh, we just want to leave Nigeria because we want to move to another country. There's no reason for that. It's because of some of uh, the policies and the, um, you know, unconducive environment, uncomfortable economic environment in the country that is making these multinationals leave. So if they are leaving because of the policies in place, because of the economy, uh, economic choke, that we have at the time, at this time, do you think the local industries can survive what the multinational industries could not survive? Are you done? Yes. Are you done? Yes, I am. Did Please you hear my question? And then, you know, before that particular question, you know, I've already mentioned that there are too many laws in Nigeria, and much of this law are not in the best interest of the manufacturers. You will, you will agree with me with that. Mm. But I'm now telling you that we don't have control on, we, can't, we, we cannot tell them not to leave, but I'm telling you that if they leave, it's an opportunity for us to develop the local uh, manufacturers to step in. And if you will agree with me, most of these companies, they bring in their expatriates and there is no plan for the for Nigeria for them to step to, to step down the training to the local workers, for the local worker to, re, to replace them. All these things are not in the very interest of Nigeria. That's the reason why I make that suggestion that if they leave, it's an opportunity for Nigeria to look at the laws that we that we protect others from living. Because after all this multinational in Nigeria, it had value to the economy. I'm not trying to to disagree with the fact that they contribute to the economy. They are contributing. But I'm talking about what can we do? Can we look at backward integration in the sector where we don't have the local industry? Can we develop them so that we have our own? And we know that when they make this money, the money will stay in their economy. Most of these companies, when they make the money, they repatriate it back to their own countries. Most of them in their own country, they bring in the, the raw materials which we have in Nigeria. They are not operate, they are not being operated in Nigeria in the best interest of the country. That is the point I'm trying to make. And governments, on their own part, we should look at our local law to avoid companies living in Nigeria because it's not good for us to be losing all these companies. All right, um, you know, I, I'm still staying with that question uh, because uh, the topic 
uh, this morning is about the decline manufacturing mm. in the manufacturing sector. Uh, let me paint uh, a picture for you. You know, the sector is said to be facing um, an alarming, you know, that's the way a newspaper reports, especially the Sun of yesterday put it. And, um, you know, the contribution to the GDP has dropped by 20.95%. That's what we have on the screen over the first half of 2024. That's January to the end of June. Now, the sharp reduction highlighted in recent report from the MBS, that's the National Bureau of Statistics, has revealed the growing challenges that the sector is battling. These are figures from the nation's, you know, agency, MBS. Um, it's further exacerbated by the country's economic and infrastructural hurdles. We're going to look into that very shortly. You know, as at the close of 2023, Mr. Adisa, the manufacturing sector accounted for a robust 16.04% of Nigeria's GDP. 16.04% of Nigeria's GDP underscoring its vital role in the economy as of 2023 ending. Now, by the second quarter of 2024, you know, I think that's from uh, April to June, second quarter, this contribution has plunged to 12.68%. That's from 16.04 to 12.68%, marking a significant contraction over just six months. The sector struggle became evident in early 2024, with its GDP sharing slipping to 14.79 in quarter one. And, you know, these are some of the issues so that we don't bore uh, viewers uh, with figures. 16.04 at the end of 2023, and now till... Uh, we have 12.68 uh, as at the end of June this year. And my colleague Evelyn was asking, was asking about, uh, you know, if it's not as a result of policy somersault. Because we see some of these companies, they have attributed inconsistent in policy, inconsistency rather, in the policy and unfavorable economic, um, you know, atmosphere. And these are some of the issues. In fact, uh, let me say this, that there was a particular company who was supposed to bring a particular deal here, an investment worth, worth millions of dollars. You know what they gave? They came here, they did their survey, but the policy was an issue to them. They took it to Angola. You know, ex this, this should be in the region of millions of dollars. These are some of the things that we are talking about, that it, are these not attributed to policy so much? Because you said some of these companies that have gone, maybe is an avenue for Nigeria's own indigenous company to grow. But even the indigenous companies are groaning. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, they are complaining. These are some of the issues. Let me start from there. Are you still with us, sir? Yes, I'm with you. Yes, please go on. Uh, honestly speaking, what you have just mentioned are, are facts. Uh, the economy is not uh, robust the way it was last year. And uh, you have already identified few things that's responsible for this. The exchange rate is there. The policy that is not favorable to the manufacturers is, is, is another factor. And uh, the policies that are not uh, in line with what can develop the manufacturers is another factor. But if I should be asked you know, for, the, for the solutions, I, I think there should be intervention. The government has to intervene and uh, we rescue the manufacturers out. Power is a lot of challenge to manufacturers. The exchange laws, uh, sourcing for forex is another factor. And uh, currently, that inflation is on the high side. Many many consumers are unable to afford and buy the product, which are which is the, 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 the genesis of many companies leaving the the, the, the the country. So by the time the government put a kind of intervention into the economy. I think it will go a long way in rescue this patient on the part of the manufacturers. And uh, the the cost of capital is another factor. The cost of capital is as high as anything, and one of is one of the highest in the world. I think government has to look into this area for the company to survive. All right. Um, uh, no, let me ask because now you have alluded to some of these things: the inconsistency, the policy similar sort. Uh, you talked about the exchange rate, which has been upwardly reviewed almost yeah. four or five times in the last one year upwardly importation rates upwardly reviewed that even manufacturers some of them that they don't have the raw materials here that they have to bring in the raw materials mm -hmm. by means of importation they have been battling grappling with uh, the upward review in uh, you know uh, the importation rates 
um, we're talking about FX, even at the bank as well, the loan rate, you talked about anything, you know, beyond 30% interest rate. Who can do business with that? Even the business mogul, you remember, Dangote of all people, Femi Otejola of all people, they are complaining. Nobody can make a gain with that. Now, let me ask you. We have a new government in town. It's not entirely new again. I'm about 14, 15 months down the line. Will you say they are responsible and they have badly managed the economy and put the manufacturers, you know, in, in, in this alarming rate? Or will you say the, the policy of this current government, uh, they have worsened what we already have? Because these are facts. You know, I've said it over and over again. There are policies that are not uh, favorable to the manufacturers. And at the same time, the, you know, there are cabas that are manipulating the, the dollar and the exchange rate. You know, that won't play a major role as well. You know, we have a thesis where uh, somebody is trying to trade in dollar and tries to call, call cause artificial scarcity. You know, all these things cannot be blamed on government. So I will say government has a role to play. We too have a role to play. And the Kaba, whatever government can do to dismantle the Kaba, I think this is the high time the government has to do something. You know, how will you justify the government that make dollar maybe around 500 naira? The dollar is now over 1,600. Mm. That government is, you know, the government has to be up and doing and something has to be done before the thing gets out of hand. Uh, Mr. Adisa, you have blamed the Kaba and you have talked about the policy, you know, we are speaking to fact because that's what we do on this program. Like, okay, the handlers of the government, you have said it, in terms of policy, in terms of what we have, they are badly managed, the economy, because that's the fact, uh, which has put everybody at this stage. But if you, if, right if, if, if you have Please, by way, no, I will on. blame me and you as well. No, no, no. You know, on. many of us are not patriotic enough. How Most of the things individuals do, we do it at our own advantage, not at the advantage of the economy. Imagine some people import a lot of things that need to be taxed and we try to evade it. Do you understand? I'm not trying to accelerate myself. We are not being patriotic enough. Mm -hmm. Many of the things we do are not in the best interest of the Nigerian economy. And we go, we, we still go ahead and do all these things that cannot help the Nigerian economy. So I will divide the blame into three. I will try to blame the government, I will blame the Kaba, and I will blame every one of us that are not acting according to the interests of this country. All right, Mr. Adisa, you know, um, well, they say nation building is an all encompassing, you know, endeavor. Yes, Everybody, all, and, all and has to be on this. Yeah, I agree. But then there are some persons that have been elected. They can vote for votes. Mm -hmm. They told the people, we are going to take care of everything. They said, in fact, the president said, I heard you loud and clear. I feel what you are feeling. And they can vote for people's votes. Now they are in power. You still think you should abdicate their duties. Let me just land so that you, uh, you can answer. You have blamed the cabal. Jonathan's government blamed the cabal. Many persons say they were cabal. Buhari spent 80 years. Blame the cabal. Tenobu has spent more than a year. You are still blaming the cabal. Who are these cabal? This is the question. Are they bigger than the government? In fact, there are some persons, Mr. Addis, I always say, the government is a cabal. The people at the end of affairs, they are the ones, they and their friends, they and their cronies, irrespective of administrations, they are the cabal. Because you are making it look like this cabal, they are bigger than the state. They are bigger than the sovereign state of Nigeria. Who are they? They are financial regulators. The CBN is there. The NFIU is there, you know, that regulates financial inflows. And the Nigeria police, all the security architecture, the, the intelligence community, DSS, NIA. All of them are there, and you still say we should blame some cabal. Who are the cabal exactly? You know, we don't need to, you know, we have to balance our argument and we have to yes, be objective please. in totality in everything mm. we are saying. You know, I will give you an example. Yes. You know, there are there are money in banking sectors, all these unclaimed dividends, unclaimed balances, and the rest that nobody can try and dig into this present government is doing a lot in that aspect and you will agree with me that it cannot do everything at a go it has what to are be they doing exactly in Mr. Adisa, and you have mentioned something doing? very very important that touched my head you know you said uh, somebody asked for this job so he has to do it mm. honestly speaking and uh, if the person cannot do it i will say the person should leave the stage but at the same time you have to give the government time and uh, a lot has been done. Like somebody will talk about a uh, subsidy, that he has removed subsidy. This is something anybody cannot do. And the government has tried it, and we all see the, the repercussion. 
and everybody are running up and down. And I, 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 I'm very happy that all, almost all the candidates mention it that they are going to remove the subsidy. Adia Bai is the only one that mentioned it. You know, somebody would have said that. Why did they remove the subsidy? See, tomorrow, I'm not an advocate of uh, subsidy removal. If I should be in the honest place, I will not remove the subsidy. But, you know, whoever is in the government is the right person to act on Adia. Mm, interesting. You know, before Evelyn comes in, uh, you have said we should have a holistic approach to these things and exactly what we are having you talk about the subsidy removal and you have even said personally you will not do that because president Tinubu has done that and it's looking like a bad decision if how many persons are telling him please remove it and many things that have happened i mean reverse it rather many things that has happened you talk about intervention that government should make but you know let's look at where we are so that we can know where to project and the kind of solutions we are looking for you know for a manufacturer really the local ones are the smes or the msmes the medium scale the small scale who wants to do something people who want to churn out maybe it's a carpenter or somebody producing food items somewhere when they are going to the market they don't have that luxury of telling whoever they are buying from sourcing their raw material from to say uh, guys please you have to understand with me there is a cabal in place nobody will hear that you go there with your money the money that you have sourced from a bank who is telling you to pay 31 32 33 percent as interest rate and now the high cost of power is another thing diesel as of today sells around maybe 1400 nmpc has adjusted the prompt price to 865 that's in their own retail outlet. How many of them do we have? Independent marketers will be selling around 850, 900. These are some of the issues. For an average Nigerian marketer, what will you have them, I mean manufacturer, what will you have them do? You have talked about, you have been in the business for over 20 years. The last one year or the last 15 months, you know, you agree with me as well, if you have to use that word, that has been one of the worst in the history of any manufacturer because to even keep a business afloat right now it takes what people call the grace of god and share you know inspiration and consistency this is where we are the figures are not smiling what will you have the manufacturers do what intervention will you be proposing from the government not just policies that is some assorting workable intervention and <laughs> uh, no, no, thank you very much you know i forgot to mention the other thing you know, government has done partial intervention in terms of a uh, fund. You know, there is a BOI, Bank of Industry Intervention Fund, which manufacturer is currently assessing at single digits. I, I know it's a billion of uh, Naira. Uh, only because I'm not allowed to talk, I would have quoted a particular figure. My own company is a beneficiary of that intervention fund. But government has to do more. And many of these manufacturing companies, I don't know, maybe they are not aware of this intervention fund. They at least a manufacturing company can get one in the in the on average of one billion. And if you compare the single digit to 32, 33 percent, you will see that a lot of money has been uh, saved. You mentioned this. You know, a, 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 a good manufacturer will not use diesel to power the plant, except if, if, if the company doesn't have capacity to go for gas. Gas is the cheapest when you want to generate light. It's more effective and it's more cost effective and cost uh, efficient. So, and if, if there's a challenge, you can boost your gas with uh, CNG because there are some areas where there's no pipe gas. And if you have a partial supply of gas, you can boost it with a CNG. So by the time the manufacturers address the issue of power, address the issue of funding, it will go a long way in uh, reducing the cost of production. All right, Mr. Disa. Now, I'd like to ask, over the years we've had, you know, so many policies have been rolled out by the administ different administration, um, you know, so that the manufacturers in the camp in the country can have, uh, you know, a, a soft landing when it comes to uh, um, 
their work. I'd like to just read out some of these uh, policies, if I can get, you know, we have the National Industrial Revolution Plan, NRRP, the Niger Industrial Policy, the Manufacturing Sector Policy, the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, the Export Promotion Council, Industrial Development, Income Tax Relief Act, we have the, we have the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, NIPC, we have the Standard Organization of Nigeria, so and we have the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, you know, a lot of them. And it seems we have the right, we have all the policies we, we, we are talking about now, that you are talking about now, that the government should put in place. With all of these policies, with all of these acts that the government has put in place, why are we still where we are today? Do we continue to bring out more policies that are ineffective and cause confusion because they say too many cooks spoils the broth. Mm. So do we continue to release out more policies, more acts that are inefficient to get us to where we are supposed to be? I think there should be a kind of a study group to study the manufacturing sector in Nigeria and possibly to have a kind of a summit where all these things will be discussed and channel a way forward because honestly speaking all these policies are not cannot take us anywhere so we have to review it possibly a committee will be in place that will look at it critically retain whatever is currently working what is not working has to be replaced honestly speaking because it's a very good way to go if we are talking about exploitation if all these things are not in place it can be a very difficult thing for us to develop our product add value and export it because one of the solutions is for Nigerian to get involved in exportation. That's the only way our currency can get strengthening. That's the only way for us to get enough forest that can be used by the manufacturers. So I repeat, government has to do something. A, a committee has to be put in place to look at the manufacturing sectors, retain what is working, and expunge what is not working. Maybe this summit has to be organized. We are the captain of industry. We are invited. We are the major player being attenders. This will be thoroughly discussed and they will add their voice and they will demand from the government what can rescue them from this uh, current uh, situation. Thank you very much. Okay, you just spoke about summits. We've, we have a summit upon summit, conferences upon conferences, we have mm. meetings upon meetings, proposals upon, upon proposals. Yeah. I mean, recently, we uh, the Minister of Women Affairs was in the news where she stomped into a conference and said, you should not be having this conference. This doesn't concern the ministry. You know, what you're talking about, it doesn't concern the ministry. We should be providing soccer to the women and children, not talking about uh, having conferences with no results to show. So do you think the summit is the way forward? When we know that after the summit, people go there, collect uh, their uh, DRM and uh, collect their, uh, you know, Esther code. Esther code and all of that, and nothing will come out of that. Uh, honestly speaking, I, I thank you for those areas. And, you, you know, if a conference or summit being organized, you know, it will take time. At least a report will be generated and uh, it will be tabled before the government. Government has to look at it, approve it and all those things. Why I'm not the app? All right. All right, uh, Mr. Adisa, uh, network issues that we hope that we can reconnect with him very quickly so that we can wrap up the conversation with him. It is really a cons. All right, we understand that Mr. Adisa is back. Mr. Adisa, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, so, please. what I'm trying to say is, you know, it's going to take time. After the conference or summit, the committee has to go back to put up their report. The report has to be finalized. So much uh, for service, you know. That's, right. that's, that's the downside Nigeria of technology. Factor. That's yeah. the Nigeria factor. Technology factor. Why are you yeah. putting Nigeria in this in this context? Technology factor. Things are there. Really? <laughs> yeah, it does. So it I does mean, are in the U.S., would uh, you say this? Uh, uh, all right. Um, let me get there firstly, <laughs> and then you know how to handle that. Mr. Adisa, you want to land on your thoughts? Huh? You said? Are you Please go ahead. So what I'm trying to say is that this policy will take time. For example, now, if the con conference is being organized, committee has to go back 
put up their reports, validate it, table it before the government, and government on their part has to digest the report, get it signed before they start implement, implementing it. So, but if all these are not working, that is why I said something is wrong somewhere that they have to address, and the government cannot accelerate themselves. Who is in charge has to be up and doing, and something has to be done before things get out of it. So do you, you think do you think this present administration headed by President Bola Tinubu uh, is preparing the right foundation for the manufacturing sector in Nigeria to thrive? And as I said the other time, there are some little things. There are some things is getting right. Some things are yet to be done, which you need to buckle up and uh, put the manufacturing sector on the proper footing. You know, uh, this is a second year. Let's see and let's just give little time. That's what I will say because we don't have any other person to be president than him. Let's see what we have. I believe we will get it right. You said time. Does Nigeria have that luxury of time? President Bola Tinubu is already one year is going. You know, using he's currently on his second year in office now. Do you think Nigeria has that luxury of time, knowing, knowing fully well where we are at this time, economic-wise? Uh, you know, uh, there, are, there are controllable things and there are uncontrollable things. Mm. For the controllable ones, you can control it. For the uncontrollable ones, you keep on looking for solution. And uh, when you are sort of uh, idea, people have to come in to recommend. I think it's currently doing that, and uh, I believe we, we will get it right. For the teaming population, I will say let all and be on there. Let us play our part. Let government play their own part. Let everyone try and do whatever to make Nigeria best and better. So the controllable things and the uncontrollable things you mentioned earlier, is the manufacturing uh, sector part of the uncontrollable things that the government you know, has uh, in its hand right now? Uh, you know the manufacturing sector, which is uh, which the pop which is the sole purpose of this discussion, is uh, there are controllable one there, there are uncontrollable one. For the cheap fund, we can control that one to, to some extent. And President Bola Abedinu has already released of intervention fund, which I'm aware that some manufacturer companies are success from you know from interest rate of 33 percent. Somebody is getting it as a single digit is a lot. And uh, for others that is yet to touch, he has to buckle up and do the right thing. And uh, for the fund that I mentioned, intervention fund, it's not enough. If I should be in, in a position to recommend, I uh, will recommend to the president that he should provide enough fund for the manufacturer company to survive because things are not very easy for them. They are battling with so many things. And uh, for the uncontrollable ones, governments should have to go extra mile and make sure that things is on proper footing because you know we are patronizing the same market if i tell you i'm finding it very easy uh, I'm, I'm, i too am not finding it very easy and i will i will i pray that the the current situation improve all right uh, you know a couple of questions because we're short of time number one is i want to ask you categorically as a manufacturer as somebody who has been in that sector for long more than two decades for an average nigerian how easy is it to run a business or to be in manufacturing sector now? How easy? Can you describe it? Uh, you know, there are some questions that you cannot answer straight away. You know, if, if I should answer you to satisfy you, I will say it's not easy. Because even me, I run a business. I'm not finding it very easy. Mm. But it's not only applicable to Nigeria. Like somebody was talking to me yesterday, was talking about Nigeria inflation. I said, there are countries that are worse than Nigeria. Go to Venezuela, go to Sudan, go to, to Turkey. They have a higher inflation rate. Go to Argentina. Argentina has about 180% inflation. Nigeria is not as worse as that. Let us, as I, as I said the other time, let all and be on Let us play our own part. Majority of this blame is on government. And that is the reason why government has to find a way to get this thing resolved. I pray Nigeria gets it right. Uh, all right. Very, very interesting. But I'm sure many Nigerians may start this. I will not want, with due respect to those countries, to be compared to Sudan, to be compared to Venezuela, mm -hmm. to be compared to Argentina. These are to be compared with Turkey. Some, but then sometimes when you talk about Turkey, you will look at other contexts as well. 
What is the GDP of Turkey? Mm. What is the minimum wage of people in Turkey? Because we can't just take some of these things in isolation. That's why I asked how easy, because Nigerians will not wake up and want to be compared. The ones you mentioned about Turkey, a, a country in Europe, the thing is, what is you know the wealth of life in that place? What is the security in that place? Nigerians are grappling. We are not talking politics here. We are just talking about the reality of an average Nigerian, average Nigerian businessman or businesswoman or manufacturer, what he or she has to grapple with. Apart from the financial implications of the side of business, does he have the infrastructure? Does he have good roads? Does he have security? Does he have the power? In moderate form, these are some of the things that we are really talking about. And, you and that you, is you, the reason why I said sorry, government sir, share major blame. All, Even all you, you are, you are too will. emotional. With, Mr. No, you are too emotional about this. Yeah. And I don't blame you. Yeah, because you, know, you represent the masses. No, we and, are talking uh, you know, about the country. Uh, there is no president that we like things to be to, to get worse and get destabilized yeah. during his regime. Mr. He's Mr. trying sorry. his best, but yeah. honestly speaking, he has to find a way to, 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 to improve the economy. It's yeah, not easy. I've already, you know, it's, it, 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 it's a tough statement for me by mm. saying it's not easy. Mm. And you, you, you know, it's like you force that out of me, but you are too emotional with it. And, you know, as I mentioned, the issue of summit conference, as somebody said, it has been done before. If it has been done and we are not getting it right, we, we are not going to remain at Kimbo. That means we are not yet there. That means something is missing. We have to keep on searching for the solution. Oh, and one of right. the best ways to do that yeah. is to gather the experts to advise. And the government has to do the right thing, not yeah. to play politics about with, with, with this thing. All right. I, I will I not agree. be an advocate or somebody play with politics yeah. when it comes to the life of a common man. M Mr. Adesa, you agree with me as well, because we are in the season of agreement now, <laughs> that <laughs> uneasy lies the ears that wear the crown. Mm. That's, that's the pain of leadership. Yes, everywhere. it's not easy. I have been in the position now, of leader. This is not it, about it's me. not easy. Mr. Adisa, please hold on. This is not about me. This is not about us in the studio. The, the, the media is the fourth estate of the realm. We are the mirror of the society. So this is not about anyone being emotional. We are just telling you the pause, feel it. And you as an analyst to help us find the solution. And you have been speaking on a range yeah, of Yeah, another solution. See, talking Turkey, about infrastructure, you know, most of this problem is infrastructure Mr. Adisa, development. Have to go. And you are not uh, if, you, if you if you if you follow, I don't know, you are not my follower anyway. If you there was a time I advised government to do social Nigeria stock exchange. Mm. Most of the advanced country you mentioned the other time, if you ask what is working for them, most of the thing they are getting right is having social Nigeria stock exchange, social stock exchange, mm. which Nigeria don't have. We need social Nigeria stock exchange. That is a place to get fund for social amenities. Go to Germany. Germany has it, and is most of the most of this infrastructure development you see in Germany is from NSE, which is local one, okay. which is social one. Nigeria needs social Nigeria stock exchange for this infrastructure development. And mm -hmm. when we have them, it's not the type of NSC that will be full of fraud. I'm not talking about one. I'm talking about the ideal one that will be properly managed, not the one that politics will be embedded in. All right, uh, a lot of questions to ask, but then we are short of time. We must go. One of these days we like to have you, especially when you come around to have you in the studio to speak on a range of other things. Uh, Mr. Kabiru Adisa, a manufacturer, and of course, a financial analyst as well. In fact, you kept saying some things, all hands should be on deck. All hands should be on deck. But I want to ask you, yes. how many hands, how much more hands does Nigeria have? But we want to thank you, Evelyn. Yes, we have to go, Mr. Kabiru Adisa. Thank you so much for joining mm. us virtually thank from the commercial uh, capital of the country, mm. uh, Lagos State. Uh, thank you for your thoughts, sir, uh, this morning. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, that was uh, Kabiru Adisa, financial analyst, right. and uh, you know it. It's it seemed at the time I felt the heat between you guys. He's not in the studio, anyways. Mm. But then you know when he said you were getting all emotional about <laughs> the topic of discourse, and I said this is how Nigerians are feeling at this time. Exactly. Nigerians really are getting it <laughs> tough and hard, and they are feeling the heat. And you cannot tell Nigerians For now, to emotional I'm not about manufacturing, it. so to speak. So I'm only. You know, we are only talking about what Nigerians feel because for um, and we respect we respect his opinion as well. That's why we have him here to have him uh, help us shed more light. Um, but then when you some Nigerians will feel, excuse me, Sudan and then Venezuela, Venezuela Argentina, and then you talked about Turkey. So okay, when you talk about inflation in Turkey, what's the GDP in Turkey? 
What's the security like in Turkey? You know, what's the access to education? Because these are some of the things these manufacturers battle. And he has said it as well, and I agree with him. It's not the best of times, really. But we should hold people accountable and not try to exonerate the people that should be taking the decisions. That's all. And we have to go at this time. Uh, it's been a wonderful addition on Morning Spring uh, this morning, especially with the conversation. We need right. more productivity in the country. Production, production, production. It has often been said that Nigeria is a consuming country and we have to become a producing country. Mm. And I think uh, this is what the government of the day should be focusing on. Right. We have 49 ministries, lords and lords of SAs, PA to SAs, SAs, SSAs, the PAs, the SAs. Mm -hmm. We need results. It's not, a, we are not about committees to exonerate. Upon committees. committees upon committees. We are not about to exonerate the government on what has happened with the manufacturing sector um, of the country. A 20.95% decline, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the GDP coming from the manufacturing sector is not something we should celebrate. And not this is how, why we are having the conversation. We'll make a return tomorrow for an interesting time on the show until then have for yourself a good and productive day my name is evelyn Ohiola, and of course spring trends is back so sit tight relax it will come your way sir all right uh femi ojo is my name and of course god bless the federal republic of nigeria god bless you as well stay alive